Ah, uh, what? Aggravated avians or something? Oh yeah, Angry Birds, that classic mobile game series which has over 5 billion downloads and way too many spin-offs. So basically everyone in the entire world has played it. There are, I guess, 3 billion people haven't, but are you really a person if you haven't played Angry Birds? For all the not people watching, the goal of this game is to launch your wrathful warblers from the starting slingshot, activate the bird's physics defying special ability, and purge those pernicious pigs for plundering your eggs. But I remember it being a little too easy, so let's revisit this classic, and my furious flightless flock is going to play fair. Can you beat Angry Birds without bird powers? The rules are actually pretty simple. All birds except red have a special power that can be activated by tapping the screen, drastically increasing their damage output. I am not allowed to interact with the game in any way until the bird I've fired collides with something, disabling their ability. I'll explain the ramifications of this as I unlock new birds, but for now, suffice to say it makes things harder. A lot harder. Way harder than any game of Angry Birds has any right to be. Now, because of the many updates this game received after its initial release in 2009, there are far too many levels to cover in a single video. Instead, I'll be tackling the first three episodes, Poached Eggs, Mighty Hoax, and Danger Above. If that makes you absolutely despise this video and you want to hurt my feelings as a result, be sure to leave a dislike. If, on the other hand, you want to watch me try the rest, please like and comment to let me know, and subscribe to make sure you don't miss the next challenge. Poached Eggs begins with some extremely negligent parenting. Our heroic Hooters eggs have been snatched right out from underneath them. I assume, anyway, given that birds are supposed to sit on eggs. Is it bad that I only just realized the play on words here because poaching can mean both to illegally hunt and the worst way to cook eggs? After a few warm-up tutorial stages only featuring Red, who doesn't have an ability, I ran into my first challenge. Level 1-10 introduces Blue, normally known as Blues because his... Their special power involves splitting into three copies for extra coverage and pig devastation. Without that, his minuscule stature and pitiful damage output makes Blue the single least useful bird in this entire challenge. Luckily, he does have some redeeming qualities, er, a redeeming quality. Blue has a type advantage against glass, or is it ice? I'm not quite clear on what the substance is, but he deals extra damage to it. So it's a really good thing that this whole level is made out of... stone. <sighs> well, I did sign up for this. There's absolutely no hope of breaking the stone, even with all five birds. So this level taught me some vital information about how to approach these trials. First, consistency is key. Without abilities, a sizable number of levels require very exact strategies to beat, and being able to repeatedly hit specific targets is extremely necessary. To facilitate this, I line my cursor up with various background elements to launch birds in nearly identical arcs. So whenever I mention slingshotting into a particular part of the stage, that's probably how I was able to do it. Second, exploit the physics system. You'll get a lot further by knocking things down than by trying to outright destroy them. Although that can backfire, and the levels where it does are some of the hardest in the game. You'll see what I mean. As a rule of thumb, though, it works to efficiently slay those sinister swine. For the sake of this video's brevity, I'll be focusing mainly on the levels that took me more than 10 minutes to complete. With the strategies I just outlined, most of them just aren't really worth talking about, so I'll stick to the most interesting ones. Now, back to 1-10. With the amazing tips I've just given you, the solution here must be clear as ice. I mean, glass. Apparently it's glass. Anyway, we can repeatedly bounce blue off the tower on the right, chipping away at the glass holding up the left one. Each time, right tilts a little more and the left is weakened, culminating in bird number 5 dispatching both of them. Pretty easy. 1-16 is even easier, but still noteworthy because it introduces a new bird, yellow. Chuck? His name is Chuck. Get it right. In contrast to Blue, Chuck is one of the least nerfed birds in this challenge. His power is super speed, giving him a massive burst of momentum and increasing his damage output. Don't get me wrong, that's nice to have, but his type advantage against wood is all I really need. In this level, we have five whole Chucks, so I even had one left over at the end. We've defeated a few bad piggies at this point, so King Pig is retreating with his abducted eggs. Unfortunately, the first level that gave me any real trouble lay between my birds and his castle. 2-2 features four heinous hogs and a glass bath? Wow, and with another on the diving board above ready to jump in? Whoever made this game really hates OSHA. This is a great place to introduce another recurring problem, buried pigs. As you can see, two of the pigs start underneath a few layers of blocks, and although four blues gave me the type advantage, that's not always the case. 
This level is easy compared to some that we'll talk about later, but <laughs> I marked it as extreme in my notes when playing. I had no idea what I was in for. Anyway, once I figured out how to correctly arc my birds to hit the pigs from above, the only thing left to do was get a double kill. It's possible to land on top of the diving board and get the pig to roll off, but then there are a meager three cantankerous chicks to take out the entire tub, which is not possible. But a perfect lucky shot can cause the stone block to fall down with you, and then it's just a matter of properly targeting the rest. 2-5 isn't hard. In fact, it's so easy that I beat it on my first try. That's because it introduces the most powerful bird in the entire challenge, the bomb. Here's the thing. Bomb doesn't care about my rules. He doesn't care if I tap the screen. This bird is so angry that simply touching anything will light his very short fuse, so he basically functions as normal. I still can't detonate him in midair, of course, but that will never, ever matter over the course of this challenge run. 2-14 introduces Matilda, but it might as well be 2-15 because I'm gonna have to talk about that one anyway. Her power is to lay an egg with such force that she gets launched away afterwards. Wow, one of the angry birds can actually fly? This is quite unprecedented. But the important part is that this egg is explosive, and explosives are really useful. Still not a bad bird to have around though because she is pretty fat. She has large bones. And as a result, she can still deal decent damage to a structure or materials just by crashing into it. 2-15 is a castle of sorts, with one helmet hog encased in stone and four others below it. Obviously, I had to break into the castle in order to kill the middle pig and access the TNT, but doing that from above took four of my five Matildas. Multitasking must be required. I destabilized the castle with my first bird, which then fell down to take out the leftmost enemy. The second shot completed the job, collapsing the roof onto both the middle and bottom right pigs. My fourth bird was enough to destroy the floor and fell directly onto the TNT. Without detonating it? Uh, you gotta be kidding me. The final Matilda destroyed a pillar, dropping a stone slab down, which finally destroyed the TNT and took out the last two pigs. But if you really want a castle, there are probably better places than 2-21. Still, this one is quite sturdy, and my one bomb is not exactly a free win. It can cause the structure to collapse, destroying the possibility of winning for the Matilda that follows it. Instead, each of the first four birds need to be used carefully to weaken the structure and allow the bomb a favorable blasting location. I accomplished this by repeatedly hurling birds into the top left corner, eventually breaking the stone slab and allowing my second chuck to smash through the wood and expose the castle innards. This is what the bomb was meant for, and after a careful arcing launch put it right in the middle of the structure, only a single helmet pig was left on the far side. And that's a job any bird can do. Except Blue. Blue probably would have failed here. After his embarrassing defeat, King Pig is retreating to yet another castle. Man, they sure do have a lot of these. If the pigs just started a construction company, maybe they could afford to buy the eggs instead? The first half of part 3 isn't an issue, but 3-11 ratchets up the difficulty fast with a blues based level. Four birds meant I needed to dispatch one pig per launch. At first, this isn't too hard, as certain arcs allow me to destroy both the walls and ceilings protecting the closest enemies. But if I'm unlucky and the structure collapses wrong, the thickness of the barrier can double for the next shot. The strategy I settled on was arcing my first two shots and a more traditional launch for the third, knocking down the stone block to kill number three. When I finally got lucky enough for the far side to fall away, I arced my final bird to avoid the debris and take out the last pig. It took me 28 minutes to beat this level, by the way, but that's still nothing compared to what's coming up. Like 3-15, yay! I'm tired of calling these structures and castles. That's kind of boring, so I'm naming this one the Casino. You might think that's because of the dice, but it's actually because I'm starting to gamble with my sanity. One bomb and a couple Matildas? It's clear that the devs had explosives in mind while creating this level, and the most important decision I have to make is where to put the bomb. Launching it straight forward into the bottom left area of the casino is enough to take out three of the pigs, which sounds fantastic until you realize there's absolutely no way that two Matildas will be able to reach the last one with all this debris still on top. And sure, Bomb can get the pig on the right, but that'll leave the first three alive in even worse positions. Launching straight to the top does barely anything, and even blowing the casino apart leaves all four pigs still alive. Even trying to launch the birds extra fast before it could finish collapsing got me nowhere. All this left me wondering if it was the first impossible level of the run. But there was a trick with the Bomb that gave me hope. It's possible to launch it into the center of the casino, blasting the whole thing apart, 
and killing the first three pigs. While it's not guaranteed to leave the last pig vulnerable, I just needed to roll the dice until it did, and my third bird was barely enough to break through. Compared to that, the last few levels of this episode aren't anything to worry about. 3-16 only gives three birds, but this rickety wooden tower isn't hard to topple, leaving Matilda and Chuck the task of cleaning up the stragglers. 3-18 is set over an explosive chasm, and a lucky shot from the starting red can knock down both towers and destabilize the bridge. The rest of my birds were spent breaking through the bottom to trigger TNT and torch the baneful boars. 3-21 might be a proper king's castle, but two bombs will get the job mostly done, and a lucky ricochet finished off the last two pigs. Congratulations for completing the episode, now try to get three stars in every level. What? No. No way. If there is one thing I am sure about in this challenge, it's that getting three stars in every level is 100% completely impossible. Still, you're welcome to try to beat my high scores. I'm sure there are some stars I missed here and there. There's a link in the description to my completion of every relevant level, so if you're wondering about one I skipped, or you want to try this challenge yourself, go and check that out. Now, challenges like this wouldn't be possible without noticing small details in order to understand the little tricks and intricacies of game design. But perhaps your interest goes beyond this. You want to create your very own video game. If so, then today's sponsor, Southern New Hampshire University, has got you covered right here, right now, with their online game development program. Take Angry Birds as an example. You can learn about 2D graphics and physics at SNHU. Angry Birds was written in C++, which SNHU teaches along with C Sharp and Java. Knowing about 3D modeling and texturing will take your skills even further, and if you want to build the future of video gaming, you'll need to learn how to research and develop new advances in the field. Heading over to snhu.edu slash drangoder costs very little time and is completely free. Filling out this form to request more information does the channel a huge favor and helps you take a step toward a more creative and fulfilling future. Thanks for listening and best of luck. Let's get back to your regularly scheduled Angry Birds shenanigans. The beginning of Mighty Hoax reveals that those dastardly pigs have a terrifying new invention. Cardboard. Now those birds won't know what's real! I mean, they spend enough time smacking into windows for this to be a serious concern, and the birds come across a serious problem in 4-6. Four chucks to defeat five enemies in a triangular wooden structure, with the pig on the far right being the main challenge. See, it's not hard to get the first four, as a good first launch can collapse the right side for two, a similar launch can get the middle, and a proper arc can get the top right. Problem is, the rocks tip over and make it impossible to hit the final pig. Weirdly, this is completely avoided by simply getting the top right hog with your first bird, because it doesn't tip over, and you can proceed logically and take out the bottom right with a nice arc. 4-11 gave me Matildas and a Chuck, meaning that I'm missing two explosions to knock down this tower. And since there's almost nothing that Chuck can do against all the stone in here, it's mostly up to my first two egg birds. Efficient construction collapsing is a must, and toppling from above doesn't work to defeat the pigs on the lowest level. But two Matildas are just fat enough, large, okay, just large enough to destroy a single stone slab together. Most of the time, this leaves only the bottom right alive, and then I just needed to get lucky enough for Chuck to have a shot. Eventually, I got it, barely threading the needle between a couple stone blocks to destroy three wooden planks and collapse the roof. For pigs, this happens to be fatal. 4-14 was undeniably designed around careful use of Blue's and Chuck's abilities, but there's a new technique in town, bird bouncing. By landing with a lot of forward momentum on a horizontal surface, birds will bounce and roll forward with remaining damage potential. This can be used to great effect on the bottom section, first by bouncing between the stone columns in the front to destroy the wood and, with a little luck, three enemies. Your second chuck can do the same on the third platform, finishing off the lower section. I never exactly developed a plan for the top section, but if you can get the bottom six piggies with only two birds, you can probably get the top four with the rest. It only took me three. Looking back now at 4-19, I have no idea how a level with only three birds took me longer than any other in the section, especially since I learned pretty early that the optimal for first launch was using red to knock over the front towers. I guess I just never figured that a direct hit from blue would be enough to take out the large pig in the third tower, but the tiny one was always clearly vulnerable. 4-20 gave me two bombs to play with, and the first was enough to clear out 70% of the level. The last three pigs are a bit trickier though, and I completely wasted my chuck. That's not super relevant, I know, but it sure does pain me to watch back my successful attempt here. My second bomb cleared out the pigs on the far side, and my last Matilda was… well… I'm not exactly sure what happened here, but the level's over, and that's all I need. The cardboard has been smashed, but our birds were fooled, and those gluttonous goblins have once again escaped with our potential offspring. Something tells me this is going to keep happening. 5-3 can be tricky, but if you can consistently trigger the TNT at the beginning of the level, it's not too bad. So how did this take me nearly 40 minutes? 
Well, half of that was needed to discover the strategy, and then I also had to get lucky with how the building collapsed on top of the mustache pig. 5-7 is a fun one, and given that over half my birds are red, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this level is pretty straightforward. The big stone tower causes some problems though. With Chuck's speed boost, it'd be possible to make it fall to the right and crush the two pigs there, but without that extra damage, I needed a new way to topple it. After some experimentation, I came upon the most efficient method of tower destruction, as three birds are all it takes to break the bottom left stone square and send the entire structure crashing onto the boat. And while it ultimately proved to be easier said than done to finish things off with my remaining reds, it was far from impossible. 5-9 is noteworthy because it features the unequivocally dumbest moment in the entire challenge. And although you haven't seen episode 3 yet, trust me, that's saying something. My last bird disappeared, leaving an unstable roof above that soon collapsed onto those smug swine. Boom, level complete. Excuse me? This level isn't actually very hard, but that was worth showing. 5-20, on the other hand, is the true final boss of Mighty Hoax, and set a new record for how long a single level could take at just shy of an hour. Yeah, an hour for a single level of Angry Birds. This is what I do for you people. So what makes this stage such an outlier? Mainly, it's because the birds I'm given are four blues, which means I have only a third of the intended destructive power here. My attempts quickly became a puzzle of how to collapse these stone pillars with the fewest shots possible, but even against glass, blue isn't exactly a wrecking ball. The pigs are separated into three groups, left, middle, and right, with the middle group informing most of the strategy here. The glass above and below them fortifies the towers, and destroying it can cause them to fall over and crush the groups on the side. This is basically RNG though, I could never get the collapse I specifically wanted just by eyeballing the screen. And normally, it takes two birds, one to break the ceiling and another to break the floor. And even when I can get it to collapse, four pigs usually remain, one on the left and three on the right. With only a single bird left, because I needed one to break in on the left side, that's an impossible situation. But two things turned this around for me. The first was a new way of weakening the left side by getting the very closest pig. That's not easy with the stone triangle in the way, and the slingshot won't allow maximum power, but it is possible. The second thing was a very, very lucky shot that just did everything. Look at this, it's like a Rube Goldberg machine of destruction. After this extremely fortunate event, I had two whole birds left to finish things off, so the first thing I did was knock over this stone brick and... Oh, okay, that probably could have gone better. One left, let's arc it over everything for an absolutely perfect shot. With that, I finally defeated the King Pig and... No! Not more cardboard! How is he still alive? Well, I got my eggs back and he's on the run. Sounds like a win until... Danger Above is the last episode of the video, and absolutely deserves to be given that it essentially acted as the final boss. Even though it has half the levels, finishing it took me as long as Poached Eggs and Mighty Hoax combined. But because of this, it also has some of the most spectacular strategies in the entire run. Pigs have learned to fly, using this new skill to once again scoop the eggs. My eggs, and I'm not gonna be outdone by some helium. 6-5 introduces this video's last new bird, Hal the Boomerang, and oh boy would his power be extremely useful, although I guess that is the point. Hal has the ability to completely reverse his momentum and travel left at high speed, doing extra damage and hitting those horrendous hogs from… behind? I don't know, this is a 2D game. Doesn't matter though, because I can't use it. The good news is that Hal has the most base destructive power out of any bird so far, minus Bomb, and can be launched much further from the slingshot by default. These properties are quite useful, even without boomeranging. Obviously, 6-5 was built to see some boomerang action, but arcing the birds to hit the structure from above can work, with a little luck for some wood to fall on the pigs in the alcove. Not a bad start, all things considered. 6-11 is a little tougher, as three Hals need to destroy a much larger and stronger structure. On the bright side, there's no unbreakable wall in the way this time, so it's just a matter of finding and exploiting the weakest points. Though it's made mostly out of stone, Hal is pretty powerful, so I knocked it down level by level and finished things off by pinching the remaining pigs inside their own walls. But that's not what you guys want to see. You don't want to see the easy, mildly interesting levels. You want to see me suffer, you bad person. And boy, do I have the level for you. 6-15 is the second hardest in the challenge, beat out only by one in the next section. I'm sure you're wondering, is 6-15 possible? What makes it so difficult? Well, the answer, to the second question anyway, is surprisingly simple. It's this pig. This one. It is completely impossible to hit him or the balloon he's hanging from without bird powers. 
I'm not joking, I literally tried everything. Blowing him up with the starting bomb only made him spin, debris was never positioned correctly to hit the pig, the bouncy platform is curved wrong for trick shots, nothing works. The intended method is to use Hal's extra speed when reversing direction to bounce up there, destroying the balloons and wooden tower. It would be possible to hit normally with Hal's longer launches if this horrifyingly poorly placed branch wasn't in the way. I even tried bouncing off the very tip of the platform to get the correct angle. Remember, I can't time Bomb's explosion in midair. It just automatically happens a second after he hits something, regardless of whether he's in a good position to inflict damage or not. And while this particular pig might be stupidly stupid, the rest of the level isn't a pushover either. I have one bomb, two chucks, and two boomerangs to kill all the spread out pigs. But while some are tricky, there are semi-consistent strategies to defeat them all. And after figuring those out, I was back to trying to defeat this slippery swine. So far, the most I'd been able to affect it was with the bomb's shockwave, which can cause it to swing around. Potentially, I thought that might bring it in range of a precise bounce, if timed perfectly. But as I tried over and over and over, the closest my birds could get wasn't close enough. Please, ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on this magical moment. Now, I was ecstatic when this happened, proving to me that the level was possible and that the last two hours hadn't been a waste of time, which, you know, is still debatable, but it wasn't exactly a best case scenario. The arc taken by Chuck had left the furthest balloon pig alive, and hitting him requires its own trick shot. Yes, I have now invented the Angry Birds trick shot genre, and this level needs two trick shots just to beat it. By launching Hal precisely into the corner of the overhanging branch, he'll fall straight down to bounce off the platform and to the furthest area of the map. I could never get it consistently, one in every two tries if we're being generous, but that's enough. Now all I needed was a string of lucky shots, where Chuck pops the balloon at the perfect time, and Hal bounces in the perfect angle, and the buildings collapse for maximum casualties. Prepare yourself for the purest 1 minute and 30 seconds of Angry Birds gameplay you've ever seen. Except, if I put the whole clip in here, there'd be a lot of dead air. Full thing's in the description if you want to see it, but here are the highlights. A good bomb launched things off, spinning the balloon pigs nice and fast, and Chuck followed in the same arc with absolutely impeccable timing, defeating the large pigs hiding behind the tower. Chuck number two's shot was a bit simpler, cleaning up some balloon stragglers and weakening the largest building, whose unstable debris claimed another three victims. Hal's perfect launch sent him up to hit the corner, then back down, bouncing up to hit the furthest living hog, and back down once again to get the one beneath. Moment of truth. One last swine smugly sits inside a shaky structure, but Hal's superior mass helps him to break straight through both walls to claim victory. So I popped a balloon or two. Good for me. But they've still got enough to float away with my eggs, so let's follow them to the worst section ever. 7-11 takes the award for hardest level in the challenge, but before I reveal if and or how it's possible, let's take a look at some of the other difficult levels around it. 7-13 seems simple, but it takes way more precision than I initially thought it would to get the furthest pig. The only viable opening shot is to collapse the entire top section, which is pretty inconsistent, but gets a lot of materials out of the way and executes three pigs as a bonus. Now, if it collapses in a lucky way, Chuck and Matilda can completely smash through the ceiling and kill the mustache pig, leaving the second Chuck only two wooden planks to break through. 7-14 is actually a nice little diorama. Look, the foreman pig is watching the UFOs through his telescope. It's so cute. Now let's destroy it. It's possible to relieve three pigs of their life privileges with only the first chuck and a precise shot, but it gets a lot harder after this. I only needed one bird to pop the balloon on the last UFO, which gave me three to deal with the telescope, but it's built out of stone and a lot sturdier than I would like. Destroying the top plank of wood with Matilda can slightly destabilize it and create an opening, which Blue can follow up on by being completely useless as normal. He couldn't even manage to go through the cube and hit the pane of glass behind it. Uh, whatever. At least Chuck's complete inability to destroy glass actually worked in my favor, because it pushed the building over the cliff. Wow, it sure would be embarrassing if I failed now. Good thing I didn't. Level set 8, the final section of the run, is heaven-themed, which felt incredibly appropriate considering what I'd just been through. Cruising through here was relaxing compared to the rest of the episode, and the only stage worth discussing is 8-8. It's nothing next to 6.15 or 7.11, but it did take me over 10 minutes to beat. As a man of my word, I will stick to the arbitrary metric I set forth at the beginning of this arduous quest. The real win condition here is that TNT in the corner, but it's blocked by so much junk. 
Destroying the bottom left glass cube with the starting blue can collapse the entire left side of the structure, which is a good start, and the following blue and chuck can destroy more crucial supports, which tilts the building to expose the explosives. Now, with some luck, the last three birds can break through and trigger the TNT, finishing off the stragglers. So, so, 7-Eleven. I feel like there's a joke about gas station convenience stores I'm missing here. Anyway, it's the single dumbest level in the run, and took me longer to beat than even 6-15. But it looks so simple and unthreatening. How hard could it really be to collapse this building to crush the pigs underneath? By the way, the blocks here spell out 1982, because the level is dedicated to a race car driver, or something. But yeah, there are a couple problems with that. First one is that my entire bird setup is for Matildas. I mean, it's better than blues, but there are four explosions I'm missing out on here. However, that's not even the worst of it. The worst part is that the game cheats. Those numbers that you thought were an inconsequential decoration can quite literally defy the laws of physics and maintain their shape with floating blocks. That makes the rest of the structure hold up much better and not topple so easily. Plus, it protects the tiny pigs inside the numbers from getting crushed. This stupid one-off mechanic came unreasonably close to killing the run. Fortunately, I have way too much time on my hands. I mean, I'm super duper skilled at video games. Yeah, that's definitely what I meant to say. All these factors mean that I actually don't want to collapse the entire building as soon as possible, and instead need to destroy it section by section, because that allows me to hit the pigs inside the 9 and 8 before they become buried by stone and completely unreachable. A perfect first launch looks like this, destabilizing everything just a bit and destroying the first three pigs. But also, when I was lucky, the flag fell off the top and got both pigs on the other side, which is a major help. Bird number two destroyed a tilting stone wall, managing to disrupt the top floating block of the nine and dispatch one of the pigs inside it without making the entire building fall. Getting them both would be nice, but most of my attempts didn't start this well, and I had no choice but to continue. It's finally time to collapse the building, and this can be accomplished by hitting the roof head on, killing the mustache pig and the tiny pig on top of the two. All right, all right, one more shot with three pigs to take out. My odds of success here were not great. In retrospect, I'd put them around 10%, but I'd gotten this far, knocking over the roof above the two pigs dropped it onto them, sealing their fate. Only one pig left, but I was all out of birds, not exactly in a position to defeat it. Until... Oh, that was so lucky! But it's the kind of luck that's required here. 7-Eleven is an absolute menace to society, and I do not want to see it ever again. No, no, I meant the Angry Birds stage. But hey, maybe there's a level somewhere in the rest of the game that puts this one's difficulty to shame. Leave a comment if you would like to see me continue this quest by attempting other episodes. But for now, the bad piggies have been defeated, the eggs reclaimed, and the king pig strung up on a balloon like some kind of medieval torture device. That does not look fun. As I mentioned earlier, video compilations of completions for every level with powered birds can be found in the description, and if you want, go ahead and try to beat my high scores. I know I could have done better on some of these, but star count was not really a priority. It can't afford to be with levels like 7-11 and 6-15, and some are pretty easy but require every bird, leaving no room for bonus points. Anyway, thanks for watching to the end. I'm glad you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you around next time. Have a very angry bird day.